Spring is here. It is crazy warm outside, so I decided we are going to make a box pleat midi length skirt today. I was looking through my wardrobe and I don't even own a box pleat skirt and I love them. Every time I see somebody in a box pleat skirt, I think they look so chic. So today we are going to make one and I love the way those skirts look out of a nice structured fabric. It really holds the box pleats. And I found this beautiful structured brocade. I just love it. The colors in it are so me and it is so soft. The back of it is even beautiful. I was kind of like, should I use the back or the front? Because they both look great. And I know it can be hard to find a really nice brocade, but this one is nice and thick and it's woven. It is beautiful with all of the colors. And the detail of this design is beautiful. We have so many different colorful flowers on this brocade. It really reminds me of spring. So if you're looking for a great brocade, make sure you check out Long and Craft. There'll be a link down below in the description and you can even get 10% off. And they don't just sell brocades, they also sell other fabrics. I also got this gauze with red printed hearts on it. It is so cute. I also can't wait to make something out of this. And they have so many other brocades you should check out too. Ordering fabrics online can be a little daunting sometimes because you don't know what you're gonna get, you don't know what the quality is gonna be like, but the fabrics I've gotten from Long Gang Crafts so far have been beautiful. So I highly recommend checking them out and the link down below in the description will get you 10% off your next order. So earlier today, I designed the box pleat skirt pattern. We have a really big box pleat up at center front, and then we have one on the right and one on the left of where our hips are going to be, and then the same on the back. And then we're gonna have a nice thick two inch waistband. And what you're seeing here is just a quarter of the skirt. So we're gonna have a beautiful, full structured box pleat skirt. And you can download this pattern at sewingastasia.com in sizes zero through 38. Link for that down below in the description. So let's cut this skirt out and start sewing. I have my skirt panel laid out and I'm gonna be cutting one at a time and I need to cut out four of them. So I have my skirt panel laid out. This up here is my waist, this is my hem and I have it laid out so that way the direction of the flowers is going up the skirt. So I'm gonna lay out all of my panels like that so that way all of my flowers are going up my skirt. Something to keep in mind is that when you're cutting this out one at a time, if you are cutting out one at a time, you need to make sure you get a right and a left. So you're gonna have to flip your pattern over so that way you get a right and a left to your skirt. So I'm going to cut two face up and two face down so that way I have a right and a left for my back as well. So let's cut out this beautiful brocade. You'll notice that I put my pattern face down so that way I get a mirrored copy of my skirt for the other side. Now just two more pieces to go. And after you have your last two skirt pieces cut out, you're going to want to cut out your waistband out of the same fabric and cut some interfacing out of your waistband pattern as well because we want to reinforce that waistband. We're all done cutting out our skirt now. So we have our waistband with the interfacing and we have four gorgeous skirt panels. I'm so excited to sew this up. And the back of it, look at the inside of it. It's gorgeous. The first thing in sewing this up is going to be to finish all of the edges so that way it doesn't fray and fall apart while we're working with it or while we're wearing it. And if you don't have a serger, totally okay. Just zigzag or overcast your edges. You could even bias bind them for a really high-end finish. That's right, every single edge on this fabric, I'm going to serge it so it has a nice clean finish. Let's serge up those edges. All done surging. We have everything all surged up and now it's time to iron the interfacing on the waistband. So I have the glue side of my fusible on the wrong side of my waistband and I'm going to iron it down so it's permanently attached. This is going to give our waistband a little more structure. And just like that, we have our interfacing attached to the back of our waistband. And while we're here, we're going to iron our waistband in half, wrong sides together. And now we have a nice strong crease at the top of our waistband. 
Now that we have the waistband ironed, let's start sewing together the skirt portion. Our first step is going to be placing right sides together on one side of the skirt panels and sewing together the straight side at a half inch. And then we're going to open up the skirt and we're going to place the other panels on top, lining up the side seams. And remember, your side seams have a curve to them. So our center back of the skirt is going to be a straight line. So that's how you can tell the side seams from center back. To review, we're going to sew up center front at a half inch and both of the side seams here at a half inch. Back stitch at the end and cut. The panels are all sewn together and they look great. It's now time to mark our box pleats, pin them down so we can sew them up. To mark your box pleats, you need to put a little mark on your fabric everywhere you have a notch on your pattern because then what we're gonna end up doing is folding these together so that way we get box pleats. So we have a lot of notches to mark on our fabric. So go ahead and do that to all four panels and then we will pin them together. Now that you have all of your notches marked with chalk on your fabric, let's go over one of the panels and how you're going to pleat up these box plates. And then you're gonna do the same thing to all of the panels. So I have five pins here. These are where all my notches were. I just put a pin there so you could see it easier. So the center pin is going to be the center of my box plate. So I'm going to take the outside pins and I'm gonna fold them towards that center pin. And these pins next to center are where the pleat should be folding at the underlay. So it folds there. And then we bring those two pins on top of each other. And you can see that where that other pin in here is where it is folding in the underlay. So that means we marked it properly. And now we can pin these layers together. And now I'm gonna take this outside pin and bring it to the center. Remember to always pinch up. and now I can pin that down. And you can see how beautifully that fabric comes together in pleats. So over here, we have half of a box pleat because the other one meets at center back to cover up the center back zipper. And then right here, we have a really nice box pleat meeting at the side of center back. And the same pleating pattern is going to repeat throughout the remaining three panels. I'm also going to show you how to sew this up so you can repeat it for all of the other panels. So there's not a huge trick to sewing this down. All we need to do are secure the pleats at the top edge of the fabric. So our seam allowance here is a half inch for the waistband, so we wanna make sure that our stitch is within that. So I'm going to be stitching 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge. Just make sure your pleats are nice and flat when you're sewing over them. Make sure they don't get tucked under or tucked back on their self. Back stitch and cut when you get to your last pleat. So you can see this panel is finished. We have this one awesome box pleat here in the middle, and then we have half of a box pleat here at center back. Now it's time to mark and sew up all the other pleats on all the other panels. I have all my pleats pinned, and now I'm gonna sew this all the way down the waist. All done. The box pleats are in and they look so good. Now it's time to sew them down to the waistband. So now we're going to open up the waistband. We're gonna place right sides together and we are going to pin the waistband along the waist here. Just make sure you line up all of your edges, keep everything nice and flat. We are gonna to have to sew over those pleats again. And don't forget your seam allowance for this waistband is a half inch. All pinned up. We 
When you're sewing over your pleats, just keep checking to make sure they're nice and flat and you're not putting any extra folds in them. Backstitch and cut. This is what our waistband looks like attached to the inside of the skirt. You can see how we sewed all of those pleats to the waistband. And now it's time to add an invisible zipper to center back. The important thing to note when putting in the invisible zipper for this box pleated skirt is that the top of the zipper needs to start at the fold here. And that is not the top of the zipper tape on the zipper. That means that it's where the zipper stops. So if we undo this a little bit, you're going to notice this little plastic nubby bit. And we need to make sure that that is at the fold line. So that way our zipper is going to zip all the way up to the top edge of the waistband. Because the other half of this waistband is for the inside of the waist. If you need help with how to put in an invisible zipper, make sure you check out my video on that. There will be a detailed video with a link down below in the description for you. So I'm going to go put that zipper in and then we are going to go over the details of how to finish the waistband around the zipper and at the waist. The zipper is in and it is looking beautiful and invisible. Now it's time to fold down the waistband by the zipper and secure the waistband. There's a few little tricks here, so pay attention carefully. Now what we're going to do is fold the zipper tail out of the way and we're gonna take the waistband and we're gonna fold it right at that crease line we had before. So right at the top of that little plastic bit there. And we are just going to fold that down. And it should line up with the seam allowance on the back for the waistband. And then what we're going to do is sew right up the side of this, about a quarter inch away from the edge, and that should put you right in the center of your zipper tape. So we're sandwiching it all in there. So I still have my all-purpose zipper foot on, and we are just going to sew right down the center of the zipper tape, right next to the zipper teeth. <laughs> And you get to the bottom of the waistband, back stitch and cut. Back stitch, cut, and we're done with the top waist by the zipper. Now the inside of our waistband by the zipper is nice and finished. Look how clean that looks. The last step for the waistband is going to be sewing down the inside here. So we're going to iron open our waist seam and then we're going to take the edge of the waistband and we are going to line it up with that pleated layer. And we're just gonna sew through these two layers. Nothing is going to the front of the skirt. So the skirt on the front is still gonna have a nice, clean, smooth look. So I have that waist seam ironed open and I'm going to sew my waistband to that pleated layer down there. Now you can start sewing right next to the zipper, so just come down about an inch and start sewing everything together. And I'm sewing about a quarter inch in. And you get about an inch away from the zipper, back stitch and cut. Let's check out that awesome waistband. The waistband is looking beautiful and smooth and flat on the outside and on the inside, it has nice finished edges and everything is laying smooth. All we need to do now is hem it and then we get to try it on and take it out for a walk. I'm going to be creating a blind hem on the bottom of this, especially because our skirt doesn't have any visible stitching on the outside of it right now. So I wanna keep that nice clean finish. And if you need some assistance and tips on creating a blind hem, make sure you check out my video for that. There will be a link down below in the description. I'm going to be creating a one inch blind hem. So I'm going to iron up the very bottom of the skirt one inch to the inside. And that's gonna ensure that my hem is going to be perfectly even all the way around when I sew it down. And to make sure that my hem is perfectly even all the way around, it's a great idea to use a seam gauge. Okay, time to start measuring this one inch. I'm going to pin it and then I'm gonna iron it down. And of course I'm using glass head pins. So if you are ever going to be ironing over pins, just make sure that they have a glass head. Now 
Now we're all pinned up and it's time to give this skirt a blind hem. I have my blind hem foot on, I have my stitch selected, and I'm ready to blind hem this giant hem. And get back to where you started, back stitch and cut. We are all done and it is looking so good. I cannot wait to try this on. But first, let's check it out. Look at how blind and invisible our hem is. I love it. When we turn it up, we can see the serge and then we can see our blind hem stitch here. And these big box pleats are looking amazing. Let's see how it looks when it's on. Here it is. Check out our gorgeous box pleated skirt. And this fabric holds the structure in the pleats so good. I'm obsessed. I love the volume that box pleats create. This is a fairly simple pattern and look at all of the drama we have with these box plates. I love that it has a fitted waistband and then it pops out with the volume in the pleats. I love this style of skirt as well because you can dress it up, you can dress it down, wear it with a band t-shirt and some sneakers or wear it with heels and a blouse and dress it up. You have so many options. And it looks beautiful out of this brocade from Long and Crafts. So definitely check out their brocades and fabrics. Don't forget, there's a link down below in the description and you can get 10% off your order of fabric. Who doesn't love buying new fabrics? I know I do. I hope you enjoyed this video today, creating the box pleat skirt. If you'd like the pattern, make sure you download it from SewAnastasia.com. And if you have any questions about it, leave it down below in the comments as well. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. And don't forget to make sure you have the notification bell checked so that way you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're in Chicago, come on into my design studio and take a sewing class with me. And if you're not in Chicago, you can take classes with me online at Sew Anastasia Sewing Academy. And there's a link for that down below in the description. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all the socials, so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And if you have a suggestion for a video, leave it down below. I would love to know what it is. Thank you so much for watching today. Bye.